This is the most insane way to do virtual production. We're in the middle of Canada transforming a simple barn into a virtual production set with a brand new product from Lightcraft, Jet Set Cine. With this new product that only requires an iPhone and a Cine camera, we're gonna prove that virtual production doesn't require multi-million dollar LED stages. All you actually need is a bit of craftiness and some willpower. So stick around to the end of this video. We're gonna show you the entire behind the scenes process of everything it took to produce it. And now we're gonna show you the final result. Material handlers, this is a reminder to please keep your hands inside of the railing system at all times. So you might be wondering how exactly can you do this yourself and what tools we use. We're going to reveal the secrets in this video so whether you're new or very experienced in the industry, you're going to see some new combination of techniques here that I don't think can really be seen anywhere else. But we're using Nuke, Blender, and Jet Set, which is on an iPhone, and the Sony FX3, which is the same camera used to film the creator. This video is going to be split into three different parts for the making of. First, we're going to talk about set building, scene planning, and kit bashing. Then we're going to talk about practical effects in the VFX workflow. And then we're going to reveal the new virtual production pipeline that makes this whole production process to be really simple. So I didn't have a huge amount of time or a team of VFX artists to put this together. So first part of this journey is going and finding a catwalk and finding these in real life uh, relatively cheap is not that easy. I looked at some junkyards and eco centers and you know, it's a big piece of metal so it can be kind of expensive. So the solution I came up with was I think pretty interesting. My wife and I, we were shopping at different places looking for basically props and we found some rubber mats that actually had the pattern that looked like the surface of a catwalk. I knew that also lighting was gonna be coming from below. So the second problem I had was I need a way to raise these off the green screen and have somewhat of a gap between the floor and the walkway. So the solution we came up with was essentially using wood from these eco centers because it's cheap. We painted it black and we aligned these across two different ladders that were parallel to each other. And this would give us the sort of structure underneath the rubber so it doesn't bend. And we could align these on top of the platform and now we have something that looks visually pretty much the, the same as a catwalk. For the background and the rest of the virtual environment, I kit bashed using some big, medium, small assets, which is pretty much just like playing with Legos, except you're trying to come up with interesting compositions and lighting it in interesting ways. And I thought that these factory catwalks could be an interesting way to have 3D layered parallax. And it would also be a good way to connect the feet of the character to the grounds. So we don't have feet on a green screen, which is good to avoid. And the main principle I thought was really interesting was that the floor pieces are going to be repeated. So this means I can film in multiple set locations virtually while reusing the same set floor over and over. So I can make it look like you're in one section of the factory or another section by just keep reusing the same floor pieces over and over. Part two, filming practical effects. So one of the things that can make CG environments feel very dull is the lack of motion. There's a number of ways to add interesting motion to shots, but one of the ways I wanted to do this was to have lots of different moving VFX elements. First, I have smoke, I have acid barrels, I have sparks, and I have the camera and the parallax of the objects passing over each other. We started with shooting the smoke, and these were captured on ProRes RAW using the Sony FX3. So this means I can use them later in other projects as well, because I'm always trying to build my own VFX element library. So if you want these, they're in the Compositing Academy smoke bundle if you want them for your own projects. So we use a variety of smoke machines and dry ice techniques filmed on black screens to get a set of different motions. Additionally, for the really thick self-shadowing stuff, I use Embergen because it's fast for medium distance simulations and works really great. And mixing CG assets with practical effects around the edges can really enhance the level of detail and the randomness. And also Embergen lets us control the self-shadowing and the amount of rim light we need on that thicker smoke. So it's really important for the density. So thin smoke and thick smoke is something that you really need to consider when you're compositing a shot. I knew the character was gonna be walking past some large acid barrels. And these barrels were kind of an experiment to figure out. I didn't know exactly what was gonna work here. Well, I knew I wanted them to be kind of strange looking on the surface, but not like rippling like soap bubbles. The way we came to an interesting result was to shoot some glow sticks with glow in the dark paint mixed with various thicknesses of liquid soap. And this with an air compressor blowing down from the top gave some interesting results. And this was all lit using a black light. So in Nuke, I key mixed these various 
recordings together to create a continuous rippling effect. And essentially this 2D video pattern is going to be wrapped onto some proxy geometry that I can just grab out of Blender on top of the cylinders. Continuing with the cost effective filmmaking techniques, I didn't want to rent out a green screen stage because I wanted to take time experimenting with this new technology, see how it works and get a feel for how I was going to use it. Found out my wife's grandparents have a barn that hay used to be stored in the top floor, but it's no longer in use. So this means we have a very dark, basically large space, which is really what I needed for a cinematic backlit shot because the actor is going to be need to be a certain distance away from the green screen. So we can light the green screen, but keep the actor dark and you need a, a fairly big space to be able to do this. So some of the budget we invested into various aperture lights, which allows me to control the whole onset lighting from my phone, which means I can relight the actor based on where we're going to orient them to the virtual set. And this is really useful because I can just control all of the lights from my from my camera. So I have my rig. I have my lighting set up and I also have the virtual scene all controlled from my iPhone. Next, I loaded in the CG set into the app. So Jet Set makes it very simple. Placing the origin is essentially where we want to snap our CG scene to. I chose to keep using the bottom corner of the catwalk and I could snap my scene to various locations virtually. So this means if I rotate the whole virtual set and I want to film in different angles, you can. And you can use the green screen key or AI mat to basically pre-vis or pre-visualize what you're doing. So one really interesting thing I wanted to show this virtual production sequence was the unique ability that Jetset has, which is not just having a background replacement like an LED stage, but rather having CG assets that pass in front of the character. So if you actually load the app, you'll see that you can actually occlude your hand behind CG objects using the LiDAR scanner on your phone. And so this helps for previs. It's not the final result, but it helps direct the scene and discover shots like a filmmaker would. The big difference between the free version and the cine version is that you're tracking your cine camera. The app calculates the offset between the iPhone and the cine lens by doing a lens calibration process. So you temporarily attach this Axoon SEMO, which is processing both cameras and comparing the features internally. Once you're done, the Axie can come off and now you're ready to film. And you can do a LiDAR scan as well, which will be really useful for aligning tracks later on if you need to. So you have the scan of your real set that can be overlaid on your virtual set. So after you start filming, all this 3D this data will be pa basically packaged up and you can export it to any 3D software you want if you're using Blender or Nuke. Uh, whatever it is, JetSet makes it very simple. They have essentially a system on the back end called AutoShot that essentially speeds up this whole process. So what they're essentially doing here is actually creating not just like a camera tracking app for one angle, but actually it's a virtual production pipeline. Thanks to the team at Lightcraft for sponsoring this video. You, you should definitely check out and download their app if you have an iPhone, it's called JetSet. You also have a free version that you can just use and play around with and start to see how this can be used creatively. Um, after using the product, I will be using this on other virtual production shoots that I'm directing. I think it's very useful creatively as a filmmaker to just move around and have a sense of where you are and you're not shooting into the green void. That's the biggest value add I see here, as well as the, the speeding up on the back end of just getting everything delivered and being able to sort of cut out some of that manual tedious work that's normally involved. So guys, if you want to see the new compositing portion of these shots, there are going to be a bunch of tutorials coming on this YouTube channel soon. If you're a filmmaker, CG artist, or VFX compositor that wants to add new compositing to your arsenal, we've built the easiest and most comprehensive path in the new beginner series. This leverages my background as a VFX artist working on films like Star Wars, Avengers, Across the Spider-Verse, and more. So check out the courses if you're interested. We have stuff for all skill levels. And that's about it for the video, guys. Make sure to hit like on the video so we can keep making more videos like this. And let me know what you thought in the comments below.